There are many drivers for economic growth around the world, but one important relationship that is often overlooked has to do with fertility. On this trend graph, we are going to take a look at the relationship between economic growth and women's fertility over time for countries around the world. On the left axis, we have the average number of births per woman, ranging from zero up to about eight. On the bottom, we have the gross national income, or GNI, per person, ranging from zero to about 40,000 US dollars. This is standardized for what a dollar can buy today in each country. Each bubble represents a country and the color of the bubble indicates the region. Starting with the red, we have East Asia and the Pacific. Orange is Central Asia and Europe. Yellow is for North and South America. Green is the Middle East and North Africa. Light blue is for South Asia and the dark blue is for Sub-Saharan Africa. The size of each bubble represents the population size of that country, so the bigger bubbles have bigger populations. We are looking at all the countries of the world in 1980, and we can already see a trend through the middle. As the average births per woman decreases, the income per person increases. We can also see some outliers from this trend, like these green Middle East and North Africa countries. This group includes some oil-rich countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And over here, this big red bubble is China. China has the largest population, but also one of the lowest levels of income per person in 1980. We also see that the dark blue sub-Saharan African countries are clustered toward the back of this trend, with higher levels of fertility and lower levels of income. As we look more closely at a few of these countries, we can see that fertility is above six children per woman, and the GNI per person ranges between about $200 and $750 per person. And there are some exceptions, like South Africa and Gabon. Now let's focus again on the entire world and look at what has happened since 1980. You can see the trend over time, that fertility is decreasing in many countries, and at the same time, income per person is increasing. When we come to 2010, we see that all the countries of the world have moved toward that bottom right corner. We see that China made really significant progress in improving the economy. But fertility in China is also very low, fewer than two children per woman. This allows for a very large workforce with a smaller population of youth needing education and health services. You can see that some of those Asian tiger countries like South Korea and Singapore have high income per person, but they also have very low fertility rates, close to one child per woman, again allowing for a very large workforce in relation to the overall population size. And we see that the sub-Saharan African countries, while they've certainly made a lot of progress, are still clustered toward the back of this pack. As we focus in on a set of these countries, we can see that fertility is lower, and GNI has increased considerably to as much as $2,000 per person in some countries. But more progress is needed to move the more than 380 million people in sub-Saharan Africa living on less than $1.25 a day out of poverty. One of the reasons why many countries have made economic progress is that women started having fewer children. Smaller families set the stage for countries to better manage their population growth and reduced constraints on economic growth. As economic opportunities expand and smaller families become the norm, family planning enables women and couples to achieve their desired family size. Experience shows that women are able to join the labor force and families can invest more in each child. They are better positioned to take advantage of economic opportunity and invest in the development of the country.